What's up guys? Four Wheeler Doctor back again. Funny t-shirt for the night. That's a pretty good one. Well, guys, tonight we're doing a little something different. I'm going to be building a speaker tube. I've done a number of these. Um, have kind of two different styles that I normally do, but the components are pretty much still the same. This one here I think is going to go on a brute force. And much like this brute force here, it's got the radiator. And so you need a speaker tube on this side and a speaker tube on this side to where the normal ones that you, a lot of people have, which are somewhat U-shaped, uh, that won't work in that case because that radiator's in the way. So we'll end up, it's really, you end up making two tubes, uh, still two speakers, amp, a little bit of wiring. And I'm going to make this one uh, Bluetooth compatible. And I normally make them where they plug right into the accessory plug, the 12-volt plug on the side. Uh, I think I have all the parts here, and I'm going to just kind of run through the parts tonight and uh, may do a little bit to it, and at least show you what, I, what I'm going to do and then uh, I'll pick up on another day because it's getting a little late. Um, there, I'll run through everything I've got here. There's two things that I am missing. There's nothing major, but uh, I'll still show you. Um, to start off with, naturally you need some pipe. Uh, this is uh, a Schedule 35 PVC. Uh, sewer and drain pipe so it's thinner walled than the normal white stuff that you see and really the white stuff's more for pressure this here um, will still actually hold up a good bit of pressure actually hold up the pressure of a four wheeler which I've rolled one over and the box didn't get crushed um, but the uh, elbow or the ends for it are much cheaper same thing if you do one of the u-shaped ones uh, the elbows for it are much cheaper than the um, than the pressure uh, schedule 40s and uh, you need four of these end caps and the way this is going to end up working you have a have a cap here cap here with a short section of pipe in between them uh, I cut a hole out in one of these pipe or one of these caps for the speaker we have like that and one tube will have the speaker and the amp mounted in it the other tube just run a wire out of this tube to the other tube will only have a speaker uh, the amp will power both speakers and the accessory wire will come out of here um, also hook up a um, auxiliary cord and we'll make it Bluetooth but I also have it where you can run it off the auxiliary as well so that's kind of how I do it um, the, all right so that's the first thing you need some pipe second thing is an amp um, I've used various different amps for these things, this one here seems to work real good. It's a, um, a sound storm is what it's called, 200 watt. I don't know if it really puts out 200 watts or not. But the big thing about it is it will fit inside of this pipe very easily. See, it slides right down in there. And uh, actually, if you use these 90 RCA elbows, uh, it fits in there real tight like that. Uh, it's a two channel amp so it runs both sides I normally just connect the um, remote and the power together so that when the four wheeler is powered on the amp comes on uh, grounded also through that accessory plug um, in this case like I said before I will be using a um, Bluetooth uh, receiver this is just one I picked up off eBay it's a Sky International uh, I'm not, it seems like that was the name round of it X10s it worked they work pretty good the only drawback to these things which I mean I think you run into this with any Bluetooth thing is that um, when you first power it up it makes like a Bluetooth notification bloop, 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 something like that and sometimes it's very loud um, but it just does that when you first power it up and then um, you know if you keep your radio playing all day you you're good but you don't have to hear it again but if you switch your folder off and back on it tends to do that from time to time so um, that's just one of the drawbacks. I think that's just to let you know that the Bluetooth's on, so you just have that. Well, this guy wanted Bluetooth, so I'm also going to hook up a RCA cable uh, with a auxiliary cord on it. There that is. And in order to get these four cords into these two cords, uh, I will need an adapter here, to or a splitter, I'm sorry. So we got a, uh, it's a male end on one end and a female end on the other, two female ends on the other. So you would hook two reds onto this side, two whites on the other side, or vice versa. Didn't look at the color before I said that. But 
that'll be enough to um, to get it wired up and working this thing is 12 volts so you just hook the ground along with your ground for your uh, amp and the power along with the power from the amp and then naturally speakers um, I'll go ahead and say you can buy these boxes cheaper on eBay than you can build them but I don't know if you get the same quality and I've seen the insides of some of those uh, pre-made boxes on there and they're uh, they don't have true amps in them and they they tend to have trouble sometimes so uh, spend a little bit more money and do it this way and you get a pretty good bit a pretty good product uh, these speakers I'm using are actually six and a half inch kicker Marines uh, so they are waterproof KM61s they have two varieties of these um, these have the bigger magnet on them I think they're about 200 watts uh, they they hold power real well sound great so um, they also have a variety that has a light in them this is not the light up variety they're a little more expensive but um, those are the two speakers and the only other thing or the only two things I was missing like I said before well you do need some wire I just actually I use lamp cord uh, just because you get a spool of it fairly cheap or used to could um, the only two items that I am missing is a 12 volt plug accessory plug to um, power the amp uh, I just don't have one with me but I will pick one up before I put all this together and the second thing I'm missing is a 2x6 a 2x6 works great if you take and bevel the edges of it it will fit in here and the amp will sit on top of it and I'll go through all the specifics on that but I have a reason behind that but it holds the amp in there real well it actually keeps it up off the bottom in case uh, you do poke a hole in one of your speakers or something the water doesn't run you know right down on the amp so uh, I've done a done a few different variations of these boxes and about found out that this way works the best I'm not saying it's perfect but uh works pretty dang good and I've had some that have been in service for quite a while so um I'm gonna get started probably go ahead and um, probably gonna go ahead and cut the the speaker holes out of these uh, end caps and this this varies from speaker to speaker so this will be uh, depending on what kind of speaker you got but uh, you pretty much just measure from the the narrowest point here out inside of where the bolts go to this side over here and cut you a hole out in the center I usually use a compass to mark it out cut it with a jig jigsaw so I'm gonna cut a hole out of two of these for two of the speakers and then um, probably end up cut cut a section of pipe but uh, I will um, cut the camera back on after I get these things cut out and show you what the next step is. Alright guys, back again on this little speaker tube. Uh, got the last two remaining pieces of this puzzle. A um, 2x6 is what I got here. You can use a 2x10. I've used them before. You just end up having to cut 2x10 on the ends, 2x6. you got to bevel it on the sides. Uh, also the 12 volt plug this is to plug into your accessory plug on your um, on your ATV this is actually going on a brute force so uh, it's got a plug in on it some of them don't have that and you have to just hardwire it in which this one here does so that makes it a little easier uh, I'm waiting on my batteries to charge up so I can cut this bevel on this um, 2x6 I got here but in the meantime I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and kind of preliminary, preliminarily, I think that's a word, uh, wire this amp up. And like I said before, this amp's going to be mounted in one of the tubes and the, uh, one of the tubes with the speaker and the uh, other tube will only have a speaker in it. Uh, what I use for a power wire on these things, I actually bought a, a spool of some um, lamp cord used a bunch of this stuff it's a uh, um i think this is 18 gauge just black it's got a rough side and a smooth side uh, i usually just kind of guess pull off some of this so that you'd have enough to get from your speaker tube to your accessory plug uh, in this case pretty sure the plug is on the left side um, and that's we'll probably just mount the amp there just for convenience so I'll pull off a couple feet of wire, uh, cut this off, and cut it in two. And we're going to use this for the power wire. 
Also going to use it for, may use it for the speaker wire too. If I, I may have some, I may have some more speaker wire over there we could use to uh, cut these things in two. And we'll need to strip back just a little bit so that we can get it under those um, lugs there on the amp. Snazzy uh, wire strippers there. If you don't have any of these, you need to buy some. I'm not uh, paid by any of these people, but those are some good wire strippers. Uh, all right, so what we got to do here, this thing, it has a um, ground remote and a battery which is uh, normally on a, in a vehicle or a car or whatever, you would hook this to your battery, hook this to the remote so when the radio turns on and off, it will cut the amp on and off, and then the ground actually goes to a chassis ground. Well, uh, we're going to wire all these through this 12-volt plug, and since it really don't matter about turning on and off, we don't have any kind of memory to save or anything like that, we're going to tie this battery and this remote wire together. Uh, all right, guys, sorry about that. Found my little short piece of wire here. Um, <clears throat> it's about the same thing that 18 gauge like we've used on the rest of this stuff. Uh, got it twisted together on the rough side of our lamp cord. And I also need to tie in the wires for this Bluetooth um, receiver. This is going to be the positive side. So we'll take that positive wire, wrap all of that stuff together. And then twist it in a... I guess that'd be clockwise position like that so that when you twist the screw in there it kind of twists the same direction uh, I've had issues with these things in the past just from vibration and all of the ATVs um, the screws on these things back out so I put a dab of uh, Loctite on it just a blue Loctite just to try to hold it a little bit a little more secure than just tightening it down we're going to stick all this on here together there's three wires going into that one battery side. That's uh, our positive from our Bluetooth receiver, our positive from our, we are 12 volt plug, and then the other wire that we're going to use for this jumper. The jumper, where it, where it goes is to the remote side there, and that way when you put power to the, to the, um, the 12 volt plug or, you know, put power into here, it's going to uh, power the amp on. I don't know if this is the right. I don't see the lug for it. Pretty sure I didn't drop it. Anyway, we'll use one of these other ones and I'll find it later. Um, same thing, put a little dab of uh, blue Loctite on it, wrap it in a, a clockwise position, run that down with your Phillips screwdriver. that and then the last one is the ground side in my case we use the, I use the smooth side on this lamp cord we're going to twist it up with this other ground for our Bluetooth receiver twist all those together wrap it around ideally you would probably use a, some type of crimp on terminal or something for these but this thing is so tight um, so tight and squeezing in here. That's probably what happened with that other lug. So tight squeezing in here. Actually, it is. I just found it on the ground. Um, so tight squeezing in here beside this PVC tube that uh, you really don't have room for the another crimp on style connector because these will these wind up being bent up like that once you get it installed in the uh, in the tube. All right, so now, now we've got the speaker wire still left here. What I like to do on them is take a, a short piece of wire. So this amp is going to be mounted on the left side of the bike. So this left speaker is going to be very, I mean, it'll like theoretically be mounted like right here uh, at the end of the tube. But the right speaker will be, you know, the width of the four-wheeler from it. So I'll probably take a, just a short piece, 12-inch piece of, um, of wire to connect from this left side to this left speaker and then get a couple feet of wire to go from the right side to the other side of the bike on the other speaker tube so let me get those two um wired in there still going to do the same thing lock tight uh tighten them down good and i'll cut the camera back on to show you how to wire up the rcas on it all right guys now we're over here on the rca side 
Uh, the way you wire this thing up, I'm gonna. You really don't have to hook this uh, auxiliary wire up, but I'm gonna hook it up anyway, just in case something may happen to the Bluetooth receiver and you still want to have a way to uh, to listen to some music. So I bought this um, RCA. It's got RCAs on this end, and then the uh, I think that's three and a half millimeter um, auxiliary wire on that end. So normally you would just plug this right into the input, but since we're doing this um, Bluetooth receiver, you have to get the Bluetooth receiver tied into that as well. These are inputs, so um, I buy these 90 degree um, RCAs. It's a female on one end and a male on the other end, just so you can squeeze it in there and they end up having to be plugged in like this here. Um, and in order to get this uh, Bluetooth receiver in there you have to have a splitter so I bought these they're um, male to two female and so you plug one of these in there and that allows you to have two two um, sources of input into this amp so one of our sources will be the uh, auxiliary wire be the white one on this side and then the other source of input could be the Bluetooth receiver so pretty much like that do the same thing to the other side I can find my um, RCA wire that fell off here. Right here, same deal. Plug this in here. And there again, from uh, past experience, I've had issues with these things coming apart. Some of them tie in there real easy, and some of them are not so, are tie in real pretty tight, but some of them are not tight at all. So what I normally do is take a piece of heat shrink and put over top of these connectors. That way it'll at least have something to kind of hold them together to keep them from bouncing loose or you know wiggling around while they're inside the inside the machine and the pvc pipe will almost be pressed against these so they won't come out of the amp but um as far as any of these other connectors i put a put a piece of heat shrink on it to hold them all together so i'm gonna get this thing heat shrinked up i gotta do um two uh four of them here six i reckon with these two here so let me get some heat shrink cut up and heat this thing up with heat gun. So cut the camera back on with the next step. All right, guys, also on these amps, uh, at least this sound storm, the way I normally do it, you, it's pretty tough to adjust once you get it in there. But um, I put it on full range because your only option is low pass and full range. And since these speakers are not subs, uh, we want some words coming out of them. And they actually have a tweeter in them too. So run it on full range. And I... I know you're not supposed to do this, but I just go ahead and turn the level all the way up. These uh, these speakers are, I believe, 300 watt max speakers, um, and the amps two, called 200 watts. It doesn't put out 200 watts, so it's it's less than that. Um, it the only way you can get that is if you do bridge it, and bridging is an option, but we're not going to do it in this case. Um, but uh, I just turn it up because you're going control it with your phone you know it's not like you're going to be entering any, any competition with this or anything so i just turn them up and uh it's worked fine for the probably 50 i've built so all right let me get uh so everything's wired up now all our heat shrinks on here and now i'm going to um cut this bevel out on this two by six and i'll show you what it looks like once i get it done well my battery still isn't charged up for my uh cutting the bevel on that two by six so the next thing we're going to do is cut this uh, PVC. Uh, these, if you if you butt that speaker up to that amp, uh, you measure it measures about 12 inches from, or just a hair under 12 inches from end to end. Just so happens about a 24 inch pipe, so we're just going to cut this thing in half, 12 inches. Uh, easiest thing to cut it with that I have found is uh, just saws off. Uh, this is actually a metal blade, but it it works fine. Uh, just work your way around. I don't ever try to cut all the way through it the first pass. Maybe go two passes on it and cut through it. It leaves a pretty clean cut and uh, be ready for the caps to go on as soon as you get, get that cut out. But uh, let me get it cut and I'll cut the camera back on with the next step. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and stick uh, this one tube together. This is the one for the right side. We'll have only the speaker in there. Uh, we've got our uh, cap cut out here for our speaker hole and then the one blank cap here which is still solid um i normally don't use this primer stuff but i know somebody will call me out if i don't so we'll go ahead and use some on here just to make everybody happy out there so uh smear a little primer around this thing 
Uh, this is not going to have any pressure on it or anything. The biggest thing you just want to do here is just uh, just to seal it up so that if you do go under the water with it, these speakers are waterproof, that uh, it won't leak through at the end of the caps. So there's one end, pretty self-explanatory. Just shove the end on there. Be sure it bottoms all the way out. Same thing with the other side. And what we'll do here, since this one's only going to have the speaker in it, we will uh, just drill one hole in the side of this thing big enough for the speaker wires to come out of so that they can go and connect to the amp on the other side or in the other tube. Double it and flash together all the way. There you go. You got one tube there. Uh, I do like to um, pre-drill these speaker holes, speaker uh, screw holes, because sometimes they will walk around on you on there if you if you don't have them pre-drilled, and uh, also it keeps from splitting that plastic if you happen to get your hole too close or your your, your uh, hole of your for your speaker here is a little bit too close to the edge, it'll it'll bust out so I go ahead and stick these in there really don't matter at this point how the speaker looks uh, naturally I try to put the kicker emblem to the top um, pop four holes in here go ahead and screw them in now and what I'll do is uh, take some silicone silicone around this thing put them back down I do like to mark where these holes are just so I can get it lined back up in the same orientation because it's tough to find those holes once you get some silicone smeared over top of them and this one's going to be on the left side so we'll have a uh, wire coming out here, uh, just a piece, another piece of that lamp cord, a little short piece on it, um, come out here. I'll normally, what I do is uh, tie a knot in it. Well, again, with, i got to connect it to these wires. These are the ones uh, straight out of the speaker. And I like to have that connection there in case you ever have a, a problem with this speaker instead of just shoving these out the side. Um, leave all these factory wires inside here that way if you ever have a problem with the speaker you can cut it here replace the speaker and never have to mess with this uh, uh, you know sealed connection here once you put silicone and all that on it because uh, it'll make a mess so let me go ahead and uh, lay the speaker up here I'll get the holes marked out and also drill the hole in the side here and I'll cut the camera back on right when I get ready to silicone everything up alright guys got the little extension wire I ended up getting another color just so we could distinguish between the power wire and the uh, and the speaker wire on here tie a knot in it drill a small little hole in here just big enough to squeeze that wire through and when I say squeeze I mean squeeze it's pretty tight getting through there also went ahead and drilled the holes in here for our uh, screws to hold the speaker in and now all we have to do it's silicone it together get my nut driver here all right so the way I normally do it is take just some normal silicone uh, squirt some around the knot that you've got here in the um, in the speaker wire and feed that thing through your hole like that and I put these speaker wires uh, the spot where it actually comes out about midways up on our tube or just a little bit off of midways down from I say nine o'clock or so to um, kind of keep it where it if you do get water up there you got you know six inches or so to play with if it does happen to leak there then I take and run a, a, a bead of silicone around the top here Make sure you go over your bolt holes on this that way when you're um, putting your screws in there those screws will halfway seal up on that silicone and also mark these spots here you can see that pink mark there so just shove your wires down in there along with your speaker halfway line it up on your marks on the side for your holes these speakers here came with uh, screws just um, Phillips head screw. I'll run these things in with my drill. 
take extra caution here not to let that thing slip off and poke through your speaker. There again, pre-drilling the hole makes this a lot easier. And you can, I usually tighten them down till it really starts squishing that, I don't know if that's the right word or not, but squishing that um, silicone out. That way you know, know you got your good seal around your speaker. Pretty much all there is to that side. And I will take some more silicone and actually put it around the, the outside of that wire hole there to try to seal it up some. I may actually just, like I'm doing now, scrape some off the side here that it pushed out. They put a little bit more on there just to make sure that's sealed up. And then I normally just set that to the sit that to the side and let it dry. And then uh, work on the next one. So I got to get, still got to get that piece of wood cut out to hold the amp in. Uh, but we'll sit this to the side and let it dry. And I'll cut the camera back on once I get the wood cut out. All right, guys, here we go. Finally got my board cut out. See the angles cut on there. This is five and a half inches wide across here. And just from trial and error, I found out that that puts the amp at about the widest spot in the pipe. So. It works out good. This is an angle of, um, I believe it's 35 degrees. I don't know. That was just a notch on my skill saw, and that's what we cut it off at. So 35 degrees there. Sits in there pretty good. You can see you barely have very little gap on each side. And what our idea here is to set this board on the very end. Ooh, just let it go. On the very end of the pipe, so like right here. And that way you've got extra depth on this side for your speaker to sit back into. So we'll mark where these holes need to be drilled. Because I do screw this in here. And the way I do it is just kind of eyeball the center of the pipe. You also have to take into account that the, the um, end cap is going to run down here. So you can't put a screw but so close to the very end. So mark both of those. Just kind of rough. Um, and we're going to end up mounting the amp onto this board, much like this. All my wires are just strode up there right now. We'll mess with those later. Fold all your wires up. Got your elbows on your RCAs over here. And if you hold your mouth right, all of this stuff will slide in here. Just like that. And then you're left with the amp sitting in there just right your RCA's fit your power wires fit I will screw this down to the board uh, but first off we're going to uh, drill these holes out the way I normally drill them is uh well let me start off by saying what screws I use I use these um I think they're called machine screws or self tapping it's act they're actually from metal but they work great for this wood um and the way I do it just so I can make it as clean as I possibly can. I mean, if you don't really care, you can just screw your thing through there and screw it through your wood and be done. But I take and countersink these things. I've got a, um, this is called a Falsner bit. Uh, you can take and drill down to, through this PVC. See, it's fairly thick. I like to drill about probably halfway through it. And I usually drill till you can start see the, the little nipple of the uh, bit coming out on the inside. And then take a normal drill bit and drill the very center out. Um, so that way you can countersink these screws down into the PVC. And then I take silicone and a razor blade, fill that cavity up with silicone, and wipe it over after I get these screws in there. And it completely covers your nail heads, or your screw heads, I'm sorry. And also, one other thing I like to do on these, just in case that this um, speaker ever pops a hole in it and you do get some moisture in here, I mount this amp to where it's upside down. So the amp's mounted here. This is the top of the tube. So you still got a cavity here in the bottom that'll actually hold some water or moisture or whatever you happen to get in there. So that's just how I do it. Like I said, I've done a bunch of these, and this is kind of uh, from learning from my mistakes why I do what I do. So let me get these holes marked out. And uh, also, I'll get this um, 
amp screwed down to the board and we'll get it mounted up in here. I'll cut the camera back on right before I screw it all together. Alright guys, I got it uh, halfway held in there with a couple screws. You can see my countersunk holes here. Uh, you have to slide this amp in there on the board and kind of hold it to the board, slide it back out, and then get these screws in there. Got to get it pretty close to perfect or it won't slide in there without the RCAs hitting. But you can see here everything's clear. You actually can move the RCAs up and down. The water wires out the front, don't really worry about them. We'll connect up all that stuff later. But I was just going to show you what I do about these um, silicone and these holes up. Uh, the pretty simple all you do is just take your silicone I like to squirt some around the hole before I even put the screw in there uh, so I've got it held in with a couple of uh, screws already so put a little bit of silicone around there take your self tapping screw and I try to line this up to where the screw hits in about the center of the board here so run your screw in there So the bottom's out. I'm gonna go ahead and back this one out and do the same thing to it. Like that. Got to do it to the other side too. But uh, these may need just a little bit more silicone in there. Not quite that much, but all right. So then I take a razor blade see that one's got a gob of silicone that's going to be way too much take a razor blade and wipe over it i dropped it wipe over it just like that and then when you paint this thing i'm gonna get that a little bit scraped off there when you paint this thing you'll never even be able to see that there's a screw hole in there so do this to this side let it sit and dry and then we'll be ready to stick the ends on it um, maybe after lunch so let me get uh get the other side done and i'll cut the camera back on in a little bit all right guys got the um silicone halfway set up on here what you can do is just rub your finger over this thin stuff where your um razor blade kind of skimmed it off and it'll peel right off it'll peel off all the way around except for the part there over the screw where it's thicker and leaves you a real clean edge around there and then when you paint it you can't even can't even see that where that screw was all right so just do that all the way around all right and you can see how the uh, amps mounted in here got the up off the bottom a little bit all of our wires hanging out the front here a little short one here is going to be for our speaker on this side a little bit longer one here will be for the speaker on the other side and then the one i put some tape around just to Make it a little easier to figure out which one was which is for the power wire and ground. So uh, next we're going to drill a hole in the side of this thing to run the wires out. The biggest wire that you have to run out of here is going to be this headphone jack wire. I went ahead and, or auxiliary cord wire. I went ahead and um, sized it up with, I'm going to use another one of these Forrester bits, but you can use a regular drill bit. This is... Um, can't even read what size it is probably a quarter inch hole or something like that maybe a little bit bigger that i'm going to drill out shove this through there do the same thing as we did on that other wire on the other side tie a knot in it so i'll tie a knot in all of these with the exception of the one that's going to the speaker uh speaker on this side tie a knot in all these run them out that same hole and then um uh, gobble them up with some silicone and then put some silicone on the outside also so let me go ahead and uh, get this thing popped through here and I'll tell you what I may do. I may go ahead and glue the ends on here too. So when I cut the camera back on, I'll have the ends glued on and these wires stuck through to um, to uh, get ready to put it back together. All right, guys, I got everything stuck together now. Still got to shoot some paint on it, but it's pretty much the final product. I just stuck the, well, didn't stick them all the way in there. Just stuck the two wires together here because the owner is going to uh, end up hooking this up on his bike and we'll... Uh, butt connect these speaker wires together I'm just doing them now just to try to show you what this thing sounds like I want to uh, play some non copyrighted music hopefully I won't get kicked off of YouTube for this but um, we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes hang on just a second let me get these wires stuck back in here okay I got the wires stuck back in there now um, I've got the 
uh, auxiliary wire here. We're just going to go through Bluetooth just to show you here. I still got to get it painted like I said before, but um, the only drawback that I see with this Bluetooth receiver is it makes a loud uh, kind of beeping noise. I know you probably heard it on most Bluetooth things as they actually connect with Bluetooth. They make that bloop, bloop, bloop noise. On here it's fairly loud and you can't really turn it down. Um, just kind of weird. But uh, that's the way it is on, I've actually used a different receiver than this, and it does the same thing. You'll hear it as soon as I um, switch this thing on. So, here we go. And I've also, that right there. I also notice I'm getting a little bit of feedback from it. Um, and I think that's from the Bluetooth receiver until it picks up a signal. I've got my other phone here. Let's see if we can get this thing to connect up. It's searching. Hopefully, it's not going to connect with the phone I'm using now because uh, I had it hooked up here earlier. Actually, let me make sure the Bluetooth's turned off. All right, here we go. Finally got it on here. Sky International is what it's called. See, when you try to connect, you can kind of hear the feedback, <laughs> feedback on there as well as the beep again. And once you connect it one time, you shouldn't uh, have to reconnect. It'll it recognizes it after that. So let me see what we got here. I'll see if I can pull up that. Here we go. Hopefully this is not going to be blasting loud. And guys, you're just going to have to take my word for it. These speakers sound great. These uh, Kicker Marines, they're... Uh, they're great speakers. They handle a pretty good bit of power um, and last a long time. I've got a set of these. It's probably five, six years old. It's been on the bike the whole time. Even during washing and everything, um, still don't take them off. Just pressure wash the thing and, and leave it on. So uh, the only other thing that I was going to say on here is I do use to attach these to the uh, ATV, various different ways to do it, but I usually use a, a wide grab one over here in the floor just because I saw it a uh, like a heating and air duct zip tie these are I believe these are 36 inch ones here they're about a quarter of an inch thick uh, wrap about three of them around here around your rack and around your um, tube and normally that'll be enough to hold it down pretty secure I'm gonna shoot these things with some black paint but I guess you can kind of see the gist of what it's gonna end up looking like and you can paint them any color you want but uh, Kicker Marines the way to go on these um, hope you guys enjoy it and hope this thing don't get kicked off for using that music there but I just want to it's kind of hard to do a speaker install when you don't at least let you hear what they sound like so uh, hope you enjoy it hit the like button subscribe have a good night